Hi, my name is Sydney Gonzalez, and I'm going to be talking with you today about how to understand a causal loop diagram for ESM 355, Environmental Sustainability. And causal loop diagrams will actually come up in module four and five when you are talking about environmental economics and valuing of natural resources. So causal loops are important because they give us a way to reason through um, elements of a system and help us understand what the consequences of any changes we might want to make um, would be. So when we look at this whole diagram, it looks fairly complex um, and hard to understand, but if we zoom in on a smaller area of it, as we have here, um, it makes it just a little bit easier um, to start stepping through. So we want to identify each element and make sure that we know what each one is. So anything that's in green is considered an element of the system. And these gray arrows are called linkages. Now most arrows will have um, either a plus sign or a minus sign. And what that means is when there's a linkage, it means that element one affects element two. And if there's a plus sign, that means that these two elements have a direct relationship, meaning if element one increases, element two also increases as well. If element one decreases, element two will also decrease. Here, with taxable land base, we have an opposite or inverse relationship, which means that as planting trees increases, taxable land base decreases. And vice versa, if planting trees decreases, taxable land base will increase um, as a result of more land available for development. So um, the plus and minus sign just show us what relationship. We know that planting trees affects both habitat and taxable land base. But in this case, these two vary in the same direction while these two plant trees and taxable land base vary in opposite direction. And we also have an abbreviation here, ROI, which stands for return on investment. So now we're ready to step through one of the loops in this diagram. So we'll start here with policy, because lots of times on a conservation project or a restoration, um, what we ultimately want is a change in policy. But we want to know okay, if we make this policy change, what are going to be the consequences of this? Um, and so that's what a causal loop diagram helps you do. It helps you step through how the different elements of a system are going to affect one another. So we know that if we add the policy, that will have a direct effect on planting trees. And it's a positive relationship or a direct relationship because if we add the policy, we add more trees. If we don't add the policy, then there won't be trees added. And here, um, as we said, uh, there's a positive relationship between planting trees um, and surrounding property value. If we plant more trees, property values will go up. If we plant less trees or we remove trees, property values will go down. So that's a direct relationship. There's also a direct relationship between property value and property taxes. And again, a direct relationship varying in the same direction between property taxes and return on investment. And that makes sense if we think about it because the more taxes we bring in, the greater our return on investment. The less taxes we bring in, the smaller our return on investment. And that in turn will affect um, if our policy will be implemented or if it's already been implemented, if it will stay in place. So now we've completed one loop um, that makes up this causal loop diagram, but there's other ones that we can go through. And some of them are a little bit more complex, so we'll just go through one other one right now. We'll start again with our policy choice um, that resulted in a direct relationship with planting trees. And again, another direct or positive relationship between planting trees and biomass canopy. So um, if 
we plant more trees, we get more canopy. If we plant less trees, we get less canopy. And that relationship is also between canopy and shade. So they vary in the same direction. But now we see our first inverse or opposite relationship where if we increase shade, we decrease ambient temperature. And that makes sense because if we add more trees, we know it's cooler under the trees and that will decrease your ambient temperature. If we decrease the amount of shade, for example, by cutting down a tree in front of my window by my house and the sun shines in all day, um, we know that that'll result in an increase in ambient temperature. So that's an inverse or opposite relationship. Then we have a direct or positive relationship between um, ambient, and cool, ambient temperature and cooling demand, and also a direct relationship um, between cooling demand and cooling costs, because we know as, as our demand for air conditioning goes up, our cooling costs will go up. If we're not using the AC, our cooling costs will be down. Um, and so that directly feeds into an, our, our return on investment. Except now, oops, we, we got here somehow, and it seemed like we were stepping through this in a logical manner, but we haven't closed our loop, and that's very important with a, a caudal diagram. We never want to have what's called an open loop, because that means that our logic hasn't been completely well-reasoned somehow. So we started here with our policy making, and we want to end up back at that same spot. So um, it turns out that the authors of this diagram, for um, visual neatness reasons, what they did is this ROI here is actually just a placeholder. So we can think of this as sort of like a rabbit hole. We could go down this one and come up here. And we see that once we do that, we can actually end up back here at our policy decision. So although it doesn't look like it, we have actually completed our loop. But because this ROI is just a placeholder um, to make the diagram more readable, what we could have done instead is gone directly from cooling cost back to ROI over here. And once we do that, we see that it actually looks a lot more like a loop. So that's two of the loops in this diagram. There are many others. And one exercise that would be valuable before you start working on your, your own loop for your final project would be to go through this diagram step by step and identify as many other loops as you can. So once you've been able to do that, then you'll be pretty well set to making your own diagram for your final project. Now, of course, um, yours is not expected to be as complex as this one. If you had two to three complete loops in your diagram, um, that would be good. And But you just really need to make sure that, you know, once you've done the research, that will help you identify the elements that should be in your diagram and that you really think through okay, what are the linkages between each element and how do they affect each other? And then making sure that if you start your loop in one place, you can always end up in coming all the way back around to the beginning. So now that we've done that, you have a good idea of how to understand causal loops better and you should be able to get a start on working on your own loop for your final project. So just to give acknowledgement, um, that diagram was prepared for the City of Portland Watershed Management Program by David Evans and Associates and also Eco Northwest.